Okay. Yeah, let, let's get started. Uh, um, so, hello everybody, first of all. Uh, I see a few familiar faces, yeah, so uh, um, that know me already a little bit. Yeah? My, my name is uh, Robert Möller. I'm a senior lecturer in project management, but I'm particularly interested in uh, knowledge management, knowledge transfer, technology, innovation. This is kind of my research area. Yeah, so uh, it's, uh, I have recently publications, I guess, uh, uh, Responsible Innovation, where we analyze conceptually how a few companies try to shift to a more agile uh, um, approach with manufacturing even. Yeah? So this was a, a tech uh, cluster near Durham and uh, in the past where we'll show you a few models actually how to generate ideas and bring them to the market and they had copied uh, basically what the Chinese are already doing in a few uh, hubs that are kind of renowned for entrepreneurship. They brought products out based on customer demand. So you, you have a cool prototype, you kind of bring it in the shop. If somebody buys, you uh, um, have a pull lean system yeah, that brings it back to the market. Yeah? So quite cool concept. So this was my uh, uh, recent uh, uh, closest publication to the effectual entrepreneurship. But uh, next to this, uh, um, I have as well the teaching role here. So uh, I'm an academic. Yeah? Uh, um, my, oh my. PhD, what was uh, my PhD was as well in enterprises. Yeah, I came, I started here the MSc of project management, then did here a PhD, did as well in between an MA in higher education studies. Yeah, just to make it interesting, so kind of pedagogic uh, concepts, and my research was largely based on working with entrepreneurs. But this was due to my funding stream, so how our research council works as well, uh, teaching wise. Yeah, uh, technology entrepreneurship. I do as well SS SME startup uh, courses with the business schools. So if you're interested in that and you want to extend it, feel free to come along. So we run workshops uh, just before the Easter break. Yeah, but uh, I will advertise it and ask Michelle to kind of uh, put that up. Now Michelle and I we are sharing this module. So I, I will be as well part of your audience of the presentation. Yeah, so. How has uh, I should have really checked with Michelle? So there are two formats. One is kind of an idea factory where you kind of give us your idea spin of uh, um, your entrepreneurial endeavor, maybe your business plan or your business model yeah, that, that you want to uh, bring forward. Or Michelle really likes a dragon dean or apprenticeship style. Uh, do, do you know what, what the presentation format is? She said it's 20 minutes. Okay, it could be either, yeah? Okay, I, I like kind of the uh, idea uh, factory spin-off. This, this is always a little bit more encouraging. So we run around as a team, kind of to poster or some format of presentation. And it's like an informal bouncing the ideas of uh, a presentation. Um, if it's a Dragon Dean, it's the opposite. Yeah, then then uh, I'm probably sitting there to evaluate harshly if I would invest into your idea, but uh, again, uh, um, in, in reality, if you do something in the company, you will actually see there are very different formats of getting into the entrepreneurial idea. Yeah, and uh, it, it comes often from engineers, yeah, in particular uh, if you're on the uh, um, management interface to uh, technology, R&D integration, this is often where cool innovations come from. Yeah. Okay, th this was uh, um, already far too much for me. Any questions to my persona? Oh, as well, if you had me last semester, is there something that has been puzzling you for the whole time? Okay, if something comes to mind, feel free to uh, uh, shout it out, yeah, and, and we deal with it at the time. Uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, we, we get started. Uh, um, so today, I'm uh, looking with you at Effectual Entrepreneurship, and I believe we have a format of a lecture and workshop. I, I wanted to make it a little bit easier, so uh, um, this is a lecture, but I have as well a small case example, so we can see actually uh, um, what this conceptual uh, stuff that I introduced to you actually means in practice. And then we go through uh, um, a series of workshops looking at idealization. So first of all, uh, coming to ideas and looking at examples of how uh, products come about. So you don't ne need necessarily an idea up front. If you have one, wonderful. Yeah. So uh, um, And uh, uh, in the end, we should have uh, um, even an output that you should put into your business model. right? So this is your 
portfolio that you're building, right? So the outcome from the workshop, even the notes that we are writing, make sure you document the meaningful that you can attach them to your portfolio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're looking for me, I'm in Wayne Jones uh, um, building or, or center, as it's written on the building actually. Uh, um, I'm in the same room like Michelle. We are just uh, um, opposite each other actually. Yeah, and I've given you as well a phone number or email. Uh, it's probably easiest to contact me. Yeah. Now the uh, um, idea here. Are you here recording this, please? Sorry. Are yes. You it? Okay. Yes. Uh, as well, if I speak too quickly, don't just bet on the recording. Feel free to just pause me yeah, and, and uh, ask your question or say, please repeat again. Yeah. Uh, th this is quite all right. Yeah, the, uh, I have a spin here initially where I want to kind of position again entrepreneurship. This is for the simple reason that uh, you, you may have looked at the reading list. We have kind of tried to set it functionally towards your uh, product or service that you want to design. So be a little bit cautious with the reading that you're using. Uh, some are very manufacturing oriented, kind of product oriented. Others are really more uh, um, service oriented, so uh, clientele oriented. And you, you will see this as well with effectuation. It sits somewhere in between. It's a very powerful model to do both a product or service. Yeah? So I, I talk a little bit about theory and practice. So I have probably a, a few uh, um, definitions that I'm repeating from Michelle's session. And then we look at the personal aspects and risk taking a little bit. This is already one key dimension of the effectuation. So uh, um, exper experiential learning uh, cycle versus effectual reasoning, and then four drivers of entrepreneurial strategy. I have here initially uh, a cooperation as a case study, and we look a little bit as a very systematic and structured way that often interlinks in networks uh, uh, with R&D, even with university or other research institutions. And then we have a little bit uh, a look at the applied version of um, Freitag. Does anybody know the company? Freitag? No? Anybody, uh, uh, it's a Swiss company, yeah, so it's quite an odd example, but uh, um, they have uh, uh, bags that they are really famous for. Yeah, and uh, um, we, we have a look at the initial setup. So this is, uh, so the video comprises of the uh, um, entrepreneur's interview, and we have a look at the idea and think what we make of it, and, and kind of become a little bit the Dragon Dean's uh, uh, people, and ask, would we invest in those ideas? Yeah? So this is a question for you to uh, decide on this session. And then we make a judgment, and then I show you as well where they are nowadays. So they still exist, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, hello, join us, please. Oh, no, quite all right. We, we are just covering the agenda. So, yeah. OK, so let's start a little bit uh, um, with the uh, um, kind of theorems. So th this is probably very similar to uh, what you had already with Michelle. So first of all, entrepreneurship is a way of thinking and acting that focuses on the identification and exploitation of business opportunities from a broad general perspective driven by the leadership of individuals or small groups. Yeah, and uh, um, yeah. so wh where, where do you say the focus sits here in entrepreneurship? Yeah, business opportunities. Uh, um, so th this is as well kind of the MBA student, right? The market research. But uh, um, wh where do you think? Uh, it, so it's, it's absolutely correct. Yeah. So there's a business focus, but wh where's the element of the entrepreneurship? Yeah. The strategy. I think. Mm -hmm. If you have a, if you have a good idea, you need a good strategy to implement that idea into a good product, basically. Yeah, so the, yeah, this goes business opportunity, market related, yeah, seeing if you can actually make it work. I see you had a good session with Michelle, yeah. The innovation, I think. Just like you can have a business strategy that doesn't have to be in it, innovative, it just works, it's based on a model that already exists, but being innovative is the difference. Yeah. Yeah, I see you. You have uh, probably already, th this is the outcome of the skills analysis, probably, right? That you have done already quite refined with Michelle. Uh, um, but uh, the key element, really, 
is that it's about you, the leadership. Yeah. So this is actually important to realize. It's a, it's a kind of centric notion for your field of awareness. Yeah, and then it comes into the elements that you're literally describing, yeah, the innovation, uh, um, the business opportunity, and as well the market that may be there. Yeah? And uh, um, every entrepreneur, you, you may have experienced yourself, yeah? if you are an artist or you have done a beautiful piece, yeah, a beautiful plane model or something, yeah, if, if this, you, you have built this with a lot of integrity and you look, is there a market? And if your mom buys this from you and gives you a student loan, then you have closed the whole market loop. Yeah? So there's a lot to be learned actually about business opportunities and markets. But uh, this is, of course, not too satisfying depending on what your aspirations were. Yeah, but entrepreneurship is as well about the leadership. Yeah, uh, and, and this may come from individuals or, or a small grouping. So this can be as well uh, um, entrepreneurship. We always think of a business company yeah, uh, um, being the sole distributor, but this can be as well in the company. Yeah? So if you are working as an uh, engineering manager, you too can be an intrapreneur. I'll introduce the concept actually later, but uh, um, this is a driving force if you want. Yeah? Now the entrepreneurial strategy and we had that already uh, mentioned, is the identification of the entrepreneurial business opportunity and the plans and actions to develop and exploit that opportunity. And uh, particular here in this context, this is actually considered quite linear. So I will, uh, um, uh, well, before I show it to you, uh, um, this is kind of the underlying series that are most common. So they, they relate directly to the innovation. Yeah. So um, the core series here concerning the emergence of uh, entrepreneurial opportunities is a creative de uh, destruction uh, um, theory. So this means innovative opportunities arise through competition and technology destroying previous market offerings. So did you, is anything coming to mind uh, um, with that particular theory? So creative uh, destruction theory so technology destroying previous market offerings, what, what could that be? Okay, I'll give you a controversial one, yeah, so to make it a little bit entertaining. Uh, so in, in the past, uh, uh, no, let's start with the new version, insurance, yeah, so knowing that you can get uh, insurance against something going wrong, yeah, is kind of the uh, um, replacement of worrying and hoping for a good outcome. Yeah. So uh, um, if, if you do a business undertaking and it goes wrong, or, or more practically, yeah, you have a new bike, you really like riding it, and hello, join us. And, and you insure it against uh, being stolen, and it gets stolen, then you will learn you get normally the full money and you can buy the new version. Yeah? So don't worry, it's a risk that it gets stolen and the danger is the bike won't be there. Yeah? So this does happen, but with insurance, we have kind of operationalized or innovation that can take the worry from us, so we don't have to hope for the best, but we have a plan B. Now, transport-wise, that may be still an inconvenience. Yeah? If you come to your bike and it's gone, you will notice that they create other issues too. But again, yeah, so this is a creative destruction. Uh, if, if you want uh, um, other example, we, we can take maybe more at the Vogue ones. Uh, this was quite an old school example. Yeah, maybe uh, CDs. Yeah? Nobody uses them anymore. Just because everybody uses maybe the cloud or just USBs or audio devices. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're going in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're quite right. Yeah. So this. Uh, um, so CD has here probably multiple perspectives. Uh, so where where do you see the DC uh, uh, CD? Do you see it as a uh, um, carrier of the media or just the information in general? Carrier of information in general. Okay. Okay. So if, uh, as a device for information storage, yeah, storage. yeah, you could uh, you could have even argued, yeah, that then before there was a vinyl or, or the record, yeah, and then there was a tape before this, and if if you were, no, first there was a vinyl actually, yeah. So but anyway, so then there was a CD, then uh, uh, it kind of was replaced by the MP3 player as a USB stick. Yeah, and nowadays, even that is perceived old school, yeah, where we have the multifunctional device, the mobile probably, yeah, something like that. Okay, yeah, very, very good example. So th that certainly falls into the creative destruction. So we, we notice that you have a function for something and you replace it 
with something else that reduces, for example, neg negative associations. Yeah? So if, if you uh, travel back in time and visit like, the garage of my dad, he really liked music, he had a lot of records, yeah? and, and uh, they would take a whole bookshelf in, and if you had the stereo with it, this was a huge operation. Yeah? And uh, now, uh, if you travel back there, there was a lot of space wasted on this. Uh, so sound had its uh, um, place there, but uh, that, that was one. Yeah? So we replaced certainly aspects like making it more portable, more accessible. Yeah? Uh, um, those, those factors probably come through. Okay, let, let's have a look at discovery series. So this is new opportunities already exist in the marketplace and await discovery by entrepreneurs. Is there a product or service that comes to mind with that? Discovery series, well, what could that be? Uh, maybe Uber. A lot of people want taxis, but Uber didn't exist back then, so they really pay very high prices for taxis. Mm -hmm. But now they just pay maybe low prices. And yeah, actually, is it true? I'm, I'm not uh, sure with that. Is Uber cheaper than taxi? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah? Okay, okay. I, I, I will not challenge this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not familiar. But uh, uh, you're, you're quite so Uber is a platform. Yeah, here again, making transport easier, right? And what they do is they kind of send the taxi to where you are. Whereas in the past you could do that as well, but that was like phoning up and then being on that spot. And then, yeah, so you had all additional features. So they have certainly created that more responsive. Uh, responsive. And that uh, Uber, what, what is Uber actually as a product or service? Service. Yeah, service. And, and what is actually the application as a product? Yeah. They keep improving that as well, so it's kind of a product that you have. Yeah, yeah, this is debatable. Yeah, so uh, again, uh, particularly if you come from an IT background, it's clearly a product. Yeah, but uh, um, again, for, for most people, it's a service. Yeah, you're, you're quite right. And uh, um, so, what, what is Uber actually here as a unit? Are they a company that uh, has a lot of taxis, or, or what, what do they do? Actually, uh, if you have a taxi license, I think, yeah. you can just join them. So. Basically, let's say you don't want to work for a certain company, taxi company, because they take too much money from you. You can just join Uber, and they have more customers. And the main thing is that you don't deal with money, so the money just goes to your account. Okay. From your customer's account goes to your to your account. Yeah. And it's also flexible, so you can work whenever you want, basically. So yeah. So th this is a key point. Yeah. So uh, as far as understand Uber, I, I think that uh, as well the taxi license. This is already here national economies. Yeah, so here you're looking at national markets, and those are political, uh, um, maybe I shouldn't overemphasize it, but uh, um, there are some political arrangements that may constrain a market or access to a market. Yeah, so you too, when you have a product or service, you may find that uh, there are certain loops that you have to jump through to getting actually access to a national market or, or industry market. Yeah. And uh, you, you are right, so here in the UK I think you need to have a taxi license, but you can otherwise just rock up with your car and register yeah, with Uber, and as long as you get positive ratings, you can keep driving. Yeah? So uh, I experienced a uh, probably competitor in Asia, so in Indonesia, Malaysia and uh, Singapore, Grab is a big thing. Yeah? Uh, it's uh, basically the same thing. And uh, um, yeah, it's it's the same idea. So you can basically just jump in, but you jump in people's private car, and then they introduce themselves, and uh, you you get a prize quote, and and they drive you. So it's quite impressive. Yeah. So this is maybe a discovery theory. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure. You, you could probably argue it's it's as well destructive, yeah. but you could say as a media, yeah, in a innovation tool, uh, it it was a new form of um, connecting people. Yeah, discovery. Yeah. Again, the, the tr traditional discoveries are, are more uh, related to technology innovation, so breakthrough. Uh, um, so certainly the Silicon Valley with communication technologies taking over is one such thing, but uh, other discoveries are to do with initial electricity. So if you track it back, those are kind of the big uh, innovations that came in. Yeah, but uh, again, uh, discoveries can be as well incremental and really make a huge change. Yeah. Then we have the creative theory. This is new opportunities can be developed by entrepreneurs experimenting and creating new market demand. Anything coming to mind here? 
So again, probably uh, both the former ones would fit somehow in there too, but any, any kind of idea any, uh, or innovation? Space tourism, that's a new market, so... Okay. <laughs> yeah. So maybe in the future, you know, they can make relatively good money with space tourism companies yeah. like uh, Richard Branson's company or in SpaceX. So Virgin Galactic, yeah. yeah. Galaxy or Galactic? Galactic. Galactic. I think yeah. I think Galactic was something else that I watched on the television when I watched a Marvel movie or something. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, quite, quite right. Yeah. So yeah, so there was always a market, but very limited, just for a few elite pilots that had been trained for a very long time from committed agencies, yeah, and then sent up and, and quickly brought back. So now maybe even a, a, a mass market for tourism. Yeah, and here not necessarily the world as a mass, but a few select that have kind of the pocket money. Yeah, uh, um, but again, this is as well where kind of uh, um, yeah, elevation came in general, the, the whole industry of aerospace uh, um, actually departed from there. Yeah. Are there creative series that we maybe see? So particular entrepreneurs experimenting? No, normally particular uh, technology or engineering students uh, um, always tell me a lot about the uh, initial mouse. Yeah, that this was, this came, did you know who puzzled this together? So th this was actually uh, initially a project from Steve Jobs. So there, there were actually tech startups that had already kind of touch interface. There was already the yeah, clicking from the mouse and uh, Steve Jobs did nothing else than combining the two. Yeah, so uh, um, they experimented around in the uh, um, lab if this would be workable and then made this initially the mouse for Apple, yeah, which was sitting actually in the dashboard and then it was moved out. They realized that it's actually better to have that as a, a separate function that is formed around the hand. Yeah, so there were a few uh, further designs. But again, th those are kind of the uh, um, ideas and uh, uh, most common series. So again, I have given you uh, um, directed learning with a paper. It's a quick read, yeah, a 10-pager, but it explains a little bit the theories in a little bit more detail. So if you're interested in this, where ideas come from, or, or if you have a product in mind, you know, a service that you want to kind of um, go down with, uh, um, then have a look at the theories. Uh, they have some really good guiding principles. Yeah. Now, uh, um, when we actually look at the uh, model of entrepreneurial strategy, and this is as well what we're emphasizing, right? So you're not developing a business plan. So business plans are often done for bankers, investors. Yeah, my, my dad is a banker, or used to be a banker, and uh, uh, bankers are looking uh, merely at the potential return of investment versus ratios and securities. Also they have often a, a portfolio where they are literally looking like, okay, how much money can I put in? How risky is it? Is there a market for it? Yeah, and then they optimize it basically on the finance. Now, this is often what the business plan does. The business plan is useful if you're looking for credit yeah, or, or joint venture or a business angel. I will explain that next session a little bit more. But uh, um, it's not required. Yeah? So we have now new formats of uh, um, uh, uh, championing. So there the model is actually the right idea. Yeah? So even Red Bull or, or companies like that, they actually have a business model, not a business plan as such. Yeah? OK, so what, what is a model for entrepreneurial uh, strategy process? So first of all, uh, first of all, we analyze uh, our environment, resources, especially those that contribute to the business opportunity. Yeah, so in a way, we, we have that already. Then the business opportunity has identified. This differs from a prescriptive strategy in that meant there are no real options, uh, typically just a single opportunity. And then uh, um, the third one is recruit a team plus the external resources to exploit the opportunity set up a business, launch product or service, feedback mechanism to assess uh, prospects and uh, develop the opportunity further. And if you want, you can then see this uh, visualized something like this. So this is our traditional model of entrepreneurship. And uh, um, it, it is quite uh, linear, but we will cover a lot of aspects. This is actually why I present this to you. So you have already probably identified prior no, uh, uh, knowledge and uh, educational background of yourself, maybe. Then we, we have to kind of have a feeling for environmental uncertainties and growth of opportunities. 
So this is as well what we are actually covering this session. But then in the next session, we do an assessment on your service idea or all the products that you're interested in. Um, past dependent prior experience. Now this is maybe your personal background. Again, we will look at that in more detail. So your personal background, your personal networks, yeah, uh, what, what you have seen in the past. Yeah? So sometimes people think, like, I haven't seen anything. Yeah? Well, what can I use? This is actually very wrong. Yeah? We are concept, uh, uh, we're actually consistently picking up. Yeah? This is uh, uh, actually important to recognize as a resource. And in the Freitag example, have a look what they actually started off with in terms of background. Yeah, this is actually quite mind-blowing where they arrived. Yeah? Uh, experimenting with uh, um, possible ideas, this can be as well things that you're just passionate about. Yeah? Uh, um, and, and this is kind of a uh, um, means to identifying the opportunity, and then we kind of work through it. So we will actually work to an initial idea or opportunity in this week's session. Yeah? And then in, in uh, the coming week, we actually have a look at different ways of evaluating this. Okay, so uh, um, personal aspects for entrepreneurs. Again, you had that already, but I wanted to bring it back uh, up to just uh, really kind of remind of that is uh, um, the risk taking. Yeah? So an entrepreneur is as well the recognition you you had enough yeah, from the safe uh, employee situation. Yeah? So uh, um, this means the company yeah, is legally liable for you. You are part of the team. So if, if, if the idea doesn't work out, yeah, you are not the risk taker here. So here you're saying like, no, no, wait a minute. I, I really want to make this happen. I, I think I can take the risk. And this can come uh, uh, in many forms. Uh, normally it's not the risk association that banks have with it in terms of money return, but it's more risk as in like the idea may not work out. Uh, but uh, again, we, we have processes that is nearly a guarantee that uh, the idea will work in some way or form. So, uh, um, so here, no common personality characteristics of entrepreneurs, but personal background and motivation are important for strategy development. So I, I referred to you already in the, uh, um, yeah, earlier to it as passion. You know, or if you have an idea that you really kind of uh, believe in or, or have an interest, this is normally a really good starting point. Yeah? Then successful entrepreneur, likely to be hardworking, confident, respective to new ideas. Uh, um, but again, be careful, particularly uh, new startups and as well uh, um, ICT kind of companies are actually, well, they're kind of hardworking, but they often came out of comfort. Uh, so they wanted to make things easier or, or uh, um, certainly replace kind of hard aspects. Yeah? So particular artificial intelligence, automation, often try to uh, remove aspects of hardworking uh, um, aspects, but again, this may uh, still be true in the individual. Yeah? And then last one, but not least, particular important personal skill, ability to transfer knowledge within an organization. Now this can just be a, a small company that, that you run, but you still have kind of the people that you are working with, yeah? that you are trying to maybe convince that this is an additional aspect that will enrich their organization. Yeah? Okay. So with this, you have the risk is inherent in entrepreneurship, often involving a personal gamble. You know, and uh, um, in the workshop, I give you a few characteristics so you can kind of see where you si see yourself sitting. So th this should refer back to last, works, uh, last week's kind of um, skills assessment. Then uh, import and uh, uh, distinguish between risk and uncertainty. So uh, risk, the measurable chance of making a loss. And I, I guess uh, the, the important uh, um, other element with risk is as well, uh, risk itself is not the danger, right? It's risk is a proportionality of the danger actually happening. Uh, so there are two other factors to this. Then the uncertainty, uh, the unknown consequence of a business opportunity is uh, often immeasurable. But again, you can do kind of informed guesses. Uh, and uh, um, I, I will show you as well how. And risk may be reduced by further research while uncertainty is unlikely to be reduced. So again, uh, you, you can make action happen by being the leader and trying to make it happen. But uh, um, the uncertainty will probably remain until you, you see how your product impacts. Importantly, risk reduction can cause tension in some organizations because the resources required to research the risk may need to uh, um, 
be taken from other parts of such companies, thus reducing opportunities elsewhere. So again, when, when we come to the examples in the workshop, you will see I, I worked as well in the past in R&D R &D, uh, department from PepsiCo International, and you, you have great ideas that the company doesn't see as a core opportunity. Then what companies often do is they don't pursue the idea themselves, but they start a new organization, an external uh, organization that is funded from the main organization to see and try out if that works. This is mainly to do reduce the risk and association. Yeah, so particular, you, you see that actually with a lot of companies. Uh, um, but we, we have a look at that in the workshop, uh, um, what, what that actually means. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do entrepreneurs develop opportunities? And an essential part is, of course, the idea of this. Well, uh, um, various series uh, um, say with uh, non-dominant finding, really. But uh, um, a good starting uh, point is normally the experimental learning cycle and effectual reasoning. So they have kind of tried to uh, um, bridge that gap. but. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, the personal aspects, so this is the, uh, um, well, actually this is the learning cycle. So you, you have initially a concrete experience that you may start off with, that is the initiator for observations and reflection. So uh, this may allow you then the forming of abstracts and uh, um, uh, uh, concepts that you see as more fitting. Yeah, so this means as well we have to abstract first the problem, yeah, which is not easily done. And then you want to kind of test it in a new situation and actually see if this happens uh, or if this works. Uh, um, and that then allows you to kind of re-engage with the same process. So this is often something that is used as an abstract construct uh, to, to kind of break down the concrete experience. But again, so this is one. The other one is uh, um, the effectuation. Uh, um, and I have to explain that. Now, this is more a resource hint. So uh, Sarah's Sava, yeah, Savasvasi, uh, I haven't said that properly, but uh, uh, she, she is a, a um, professor, uh, um, used to be at MIT, and she has kind of started this movement. And it, it wasn't really her movement that, uh, um, in the first place, she was just deeply dissatisfied with what entrepreneurial theory had established. So it followed really a very scientific method. And uh, she established a reoccurring uh, pattern, which she then kind of called effectuation, coming largely from the interviews she did with the entrepreneurs. So they kind of uh, um, yeah, turned the entrepreneurial theory upside down. Now, what, what is that actually? Effectuation uh, kind of relies on five dimensions. And we have a look today at the first one in the example. So effectuation is fundamentally, re well, fundamentally rethinks how entrepreneurship is researched and taught throughout the world. Uh, um, effectuation is a logic used by an expert entrepreneur to solve problems in highly uncertain market environments. Yeah, so how, how do you uh, come out with a technology, for example, like Google search? Uh, Google, uh, Google search was so uh, um, unlucky initially. Uh, they, they started off at, at Harvard University, MIT, and the weather sit both uh, are basically uh, in Boston on, on the river. Uh, and uh, um, they, they couldn't find a company that was willing to invest in them. Uh, they, they run around for three years, not able to get any grant funding, because they were like, why would people search anything on the internet? This is just ridiculous. And you don't even have a library? Uh, they didn't, no. Uh, and, uh, um, in reality, they started looking not anymore at the banks for venture capital, but they looked in their local networks. They had a professor that was writing grant funding, yeah, so they, they were using the kind of surrounding networks to actually start up Google. And if any of the investors that they asked in the past would have known this, uh, they would have certainly uh, uh, been in tears. But the point is, there was no market for them. Yeah, and, uh, um, that was highly uncertain if there was actually a market for something like Google. Yeah. So entrepreneurs can as well learn to think and act effectually. So it's, it's a logic that is applied. Yeah. And, and we are looking here for certain aspects. So uh, um, if you start actually looking through that perspective, you will see uh, you will be increasing your ability to kind of recognize um, indicators for a successful venture. Yeah? So you, uh, once you start applying the logic, 
you, you can as well uh, um, kind of analyze your own environment and you're very likely to find kind of uh, um, sources that will allow you to start your uh, successful venture as well. Now what, what is the difference uh, um, to kind of the old scientific uh, method? So the uh, um, scientific method kind of is based on causation. You're probably uh, already familiar with it. The focus here uh, in causation is on achieving a desired goal through a specific set of given means. So this is as well kind of your project proposal. Uh, you're identifying what resources do I need. I, I need maybe a laboratory. Then if you want to test how strong materials are, you may need a hydraulic press with oil and things like that. Yeah. So and then, then you can price that oil up, you put it together, and then you can maybe uh, press something uh, in, in a certain form, yeah, or you can check how strong things are. Yeah, so uh, th those are then kind of the given means. Now causation invokes as well uh, a search and select tactic. Yeah, so you, you do an evaluation here uh, kind of up front and analyze most uh, um, scientific theories as well. So you kind of identify it, you, you test it, and then you uh, kind of look at the causation. So you actually try to reduce as well the problem normally to simple matters where you can really kind of test if something is true or false. And often the theorems are built on trying to falsify. You know? So you, you test often your theorems against the wrongdoing rather than if they are right, uh, because this creates potential biases. Now, uh, um, casual thinkers believe, now this is taken from the book, yeah, I would not formulate it uh, as such, uh, and as well, uh, social scientists arguably, uh, so um, believe that if I can predict the future, I can control it, now this is of course crazy, uh, if I can predict some elements of the future, it's likely that there's some form of control as well in the future. Uh, so the absolute control is uh, as well the same uh, beautiful idea as uh, absolute freedom. Yeah, but again, th this is a theoretical argument. But uh, there's some form of prediction and control with this. Yeah. Now with effectuation, the, the focus is actually kind of turned upside down. So um, you, you're more looking here at what means are accessible to you or who wants to work with you in the first place. And then you have a look what you can actually make with those. Yeah? So to read it in the definition, the focus here is on using a set of evolving means. Yeah? So this is uh, you, you haven't got the list kind of made like a recipe, but you look in your uh, fridge, hey, what do I actually have at home? Yeah? Um, I think everybody has a cooking experience, yeah? cooking after recipe. Okay, you, you have a list what should be going, uh, what should be the ingredients. So you go to the supermarket, buy those uh, um, kind of things, yeah, and then cook to the recipe. Now this is kind of causation, right? So you put in what you want to get out. Now effectuation is you, you had a long day and you notice, oh, you haven't got a recipe ready. What do I have in the fridge? Yeah, And that then creates basically what you can cook. So this is a little bit the idea. So here the focus is on using a set of evolving means to achieve new and different goals. Uh, effectuation evokes creative and transformative tra tactics. So this is as well why it's actually very powerful. Yeah? Particularly if you recognize problems, you can actually kind of come up with a solution with your means available. So it makes you a very strong partner. Yeah? Effectual logic is a name given to heuristics used by expert entrepreneurs in a new venture creation. Yeah? Heuristics is uh, um, basically the idea of experience, right? So. It's not necessarily a, a, um, a thorough, so heuristic, so you have come across that, right? So it's, we, we are kind of looking here of what, what is actually happening rather than coming up with a generalizable theory. Uh, then you have a spectrum of what's available. Uh, this is powerful. This gives you different options and tactics, right? Okay. Now, uh, effectual thinkers believe, believe that uh, if I can control the future, I don't need to predict it. Yeah? So <laughs> and th th there's a truth to it. Yeah? So again, uh, the, this is actually an effectuation logic. Yeah? If you build a, a wonderful model plane that you can kind of fly with a remote control and your older brother buys it from you for 100 pounds, you have a closed loop, right? If it costs less than 100 pounds, then you're a very happy person, right? So. You may want to manufacture it afterwards to your classmates or something like that. So th this would then go along the effectuation logic. So you would kind of uh, create your own demand. Now, if, if you look at the models, uh, um, 
yeah, this is not the best. Uh, but then again, this is kind of uh, out of the book. So uh, here's a casual, uh, uh, casual, causal. Okay, never mind. Don't don't read the heading. Yeah, so focus here on the orange. <laughs> uh, uh, so managerial thinking is often causal based. Yeah, distinguishing characteristics. So selecting given uh, um, between given means to achieve a predetermined goal. So it's where in project management or, or in most organizational cycles for delivering a goal, this is often what we do. Yeah, because we have here, what, what is the benefit actually here with this one? What do you think? It's more reliable, I would say. So oh, OK. Yeah, you, you think of predictability, yeah? Yeah, yeah, could be. But uh, um, actually, this, this is probably one of the weaknesses, actually, of this one. So here, so what, what, is the what is the benefit? So if we have an empty fridge, which approach is cheaper for us as a student? The uh, causal or effectual? Effectual. So if, if we have an empty, so yeah, the causal one. Yeah. So the, the, the point is effectual becomes interesting if you have resources. So you have to recognize your resources around you that you already have. Yeah, um, if you have nothing, yeah, you have just flown in, uh, you, you name it, uh, India, or I just came from Singapore, yeah, and I come at my flat and I open it, and there's nothing, yeah, it's absolute desert. And it was worse. My cousins were here over Christmas, and they emptied the last resources, yeah, so they, they came here clearly with their factual uh, um, theory uh, uh, along. But when I arrived, the fridge was empty. Now the first meal, yeah, when, when my partner came back, I, I was the chef. She said, like, I want delicious spaghetti bolognese. I had nothing. Yeah, then the cause is the cheapest way. You go to the supermarket, you buy the exact ingredients, you're well off. Yeah, this is the cheapest strategy you can have. Now, if your fridge is already full, then the, the spaghetti and recipe is a terrible strategy, right? You have already invested in all these resources in your, in your fridge, right? So why would we then kind of run out? I would just observe that, oh, I don't have tomatoes, and uh, uh, worse, I, I don't have, I don't know, minced beef or something like that, yeah? Then I would have to run out to buy that, but there would be other ingredients yeah, that I could use for a nice meal too. This is the argument, yeah? So this is as well, while this is actually potentially a more cost, well, actually, let's find out. Yeah, so uh, um, th this is the uh, um, managerial thinking uh, causal, and here the entrepreneurial thinking, as uh, um, identified by Sarah, which is more effectual. Yeah, and here you have kind of the given means, so you kind of do a thorough analysis. What do we have ready to hand? So this is relationships, this is your networks, this is maybe friends, your past experience, this is your education, this is uh, maybe your university networks. Yeah, so uh, uh, me as well. Yeah, so I can help you as well with the startup. No, no problem. Yeah. You analyze the given means and then imagine ends. How can you solve a problem for a friend? Or how could your two means actually come together and create a better product for somebody or better service? Yeah, this is the idea. Okay, I, I hope that made sense. Uh, um, now, um, there, there are kind of five principles. Uh, I have only three here because the other two we are actually covering next week. So. Uh, um, Apologies for ripping the theory apart, but if you do the paper reading, you will see it's, it's all coherent. So um, the principles, uh, why causal, that is again, causal, I have to really clean up those typing mistakes. Uh, um, causal reasoning focuses on expected return. Effectual reasoning is emphasizing affordable loss. Yeah? So you are kind of uh, um, using the resources you have. Uh, while causal, causal oh, here it's correct again, uh, depends on uh, compet competitive analysis. Effectual reasoning is actually built on strategic partnership. Yeah, so here is again the idea that you're looking for solutions for your network, for your audience. Yeah, as a starting point, at least. Yeah. Why? Uh, and again, the turning. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, uh, causal reasoning urges the exploitation of pre-existing knowledge and prediction. Effectual reasoning stresses the leveraging of the contingencies and yeah, building as well your relationships. Yeah. So you will see, particularly if you work in an R&D department, 
this is literally where they will push you towards. You, you are consistently developing for your organization probably new ideas, you, you access if the new technologies are worthwhile investing, if they actually can be integrated, if they will pay off. And then you, you have to formulate that actually into the causal formulation. So there's a certain dilemma after all in that. Yeah? This has to do with a business case probably that you would have to do in a big company. Yeah? But again, the, the logic comes first. Now here's the dynamics of the effectual logic. So it's a little bit uh, um, like the model that I showed you before. So here we start actually with the actual means. So you have done that uh, um, last week and the week before, if I'm not mistaken. So who am I, who do I know, whom I know, uh, what I know, I uh, forgot what. Yeah? Who I am, what I know, and whom I know. So this is the actual means. I, I break it down in the case studies as well uh, um, next week, So and, and I hope this will make sense as well with the Freitag example. Then the actual uh, courses of action possible, so um, what can I do for affordable losses? Uh, so well, how are you happy to use your means? Yeah. So of course, if you have like high value means and uh, um, you kind of uh, burn them on, on uh, your first entrepreneurial endeavor, uh, then it's just heartbreaking, quite frankly. Yeah. But uh, um, again, so there, there's a certain consideration. Then uh, interactions with other people, uh, you can as well probe your ideas. Yeah. So. Uh, um, Again, there, there are different dynamics. So some people really work in a, a um, very cautious way, particularly if you're working with patents or, or uh, um, yeah, uh, pharmacy and, and uh, genetics seem to have as well this fear to it that people prefer to keep it a secret. Um, that, that has a limit actually in the facturation logic. So here you're really requiring yourself to be a communicator of an idea creating kind of bridges, creating a network that wants to buy in. Yeah. So uh, um, with this, you are looking as well for effectual stakeholder commitments. Yeah? So you, you want, in other words, uh, um, somebody that says like, hey, you know what? You are just speaking about maybe uh, the Uber app. Yeah? I would really like to use this. Yeah? And if the whole party is convinced, then you may want to write it up. Yeah, again, that, that has already happened. But uh, um, the effectual stakeholder may tell you as well additional information that you didn't consider. So they may say, oh, I would like to have receipts as well on my app or something like that. Yeah, so then you have new means. So you can again reconsider how this information or this resource may actually add to your spectrum. Right? Or, or you have a new goal, the discovering cycle of constraints. So um, you may work already directly with your stakeholder to actually refine the product or service, uh, the idea actually. Yeah, and then uh, um, this gives you then new markets or new firms. Yeah, so you, you have already then the person that kind of takes it from you. Yeah, this is the idea. Now the four main drivers of entrepreneurial st yeah, strategy are imagination. Uh, um, here is, uh, I have a paper that, that I still haven't published and then so imagination is actually a topic that is not very well theorized. But our imagination, if you look at our innovations and what we have operationalized, are actually the old mythology kind of narratives. Yeah? So uh, bear, bear with me. Yeah? So uh, 2,000 years ago, people were absolutely convinced that telepathy, yeah? so me reading your mind, and vice versa, yeah? you can communicate as well with me, now just by looking at each other, uh, um, that this is a great innovation and only gods could have it. Yeah? So, or or uh, people with Greek mythology that there were as well titans, uh, but uh, here, here we're going too far. The, the point is that we have operationalized this. Now with a telephone first, yeah, with a mobile phone, we can now converse all over the spatial, uh, um, yeah, even if you're geographically dispersed, not in the same locality, we can talk to each other, we can exchange our ideas at least with language. It's not quite the thing with like being in somebody's head. Uh, but again, keep in mind, 2,000 years with a mobile, you as an inventor, you would have been burned on the stick. Yeah, all I'm saying. So there is a kind of technophobia that came a long way to actually operationalize our idea. Yeah? So imagination, the wildest ideas that you have, uh, um, you may want to check them first, uh, um, where, where you stand with society, yeah, how ready they are for it. But th this is basically where a lot of our ideas come from. Yeah? 
That's as well reinventing. So you see a problem and you think, why have we solved it that way? Why do we not do it differently? That this is basically here you have a hint. Yeah. Take take notes. This this is maybe the source for great ideas, great inventions, and uh, uh, great innovation potentially. Now uh, there there are competing uh, uh, theories to that. So uh, um, there is as well uh, um, not so much the idea, but uh, um, a problem oriented design, which then has to do with kind of combining and adapting. Now this is just a very simple theory. In the workshop, I, I give you an overview of what's around. Uh, so you may recognize other ones. But innovation being here already kind of exploiting the invention. Yeah? That doesn't make sense. So your idea is the first thing, your prototype or, or kind of the operationalization is the invention. Now the innovation is in the next step where you actually use it, where you sell it or where you bring it into context. Yeah? Now this is a typical uh, uh, model. So here we are looking really at new product development and entrepreneurial strategy. This is only one of the models that I kind of have taken out. So, and this is often more engineering or problem oriented. So here you start off uh, um, by uh, um, exploring a particular problem or, or a scenario that you're trying to solve. Now up front here, as engineers in particular, we often really have to start understanding the problem. So it makes often a lot of sense, uh, particularly in the exploration stage, to really try to define the problem well. Yeah? So um, you, you can try to do this uh, um, by yourself, but this is a bad encouragement. So you should really explore this, if possible, with your stakeholders that are the most meaningful to you. So if you have customers already, yeah, like, uh, um, some that, that want to work with you, this is kind of your audience that you want to have there as well, to kind of recognize what, what is actually not working about your devices. Now you can actually do that pretty much with all products or services. Yeah? Uh, um, so if you're passionate about something, try it out, and often uh, um, you, you come very quickly to great ideas. Yeah? Now the exploration begins as well by generating many ideas. So uh, um, it's as well a probing exercise where you kind of take your ideas and kind of uh, spin them through. So we do this on the Thursday. Yeah. Now then, uh, uh, here as well, important to remind, so here, this you often do with a very big audience, very diverse. Yeah. So diversity really helps here. The screen, particularly in companies, and I'm, I was always a little bit heartbroken, in PepsiCo International, we have actually consultants and like our senior managers doing who have no creativity. Oh, I said that on video, I shouldn't have said that. But uh, anyway, the, the, the point is, they had like kind of qualitative indicators and they were like, oh, well, this, this is too out of vogue, maybe in 10 years again. I was like, no, no, now is the time. And uh, yeah, so th this didn't always go down well. Yeah? So actually, this wasn't my ro role to promote anything. I would just literally show what, what, what's the wrong. But, uh, um, so normally in the screening, you have kind of an expert panel of some format, and they do a qualitative assessment. Yeah? So uh, often you have marketing in there that kind of analyze it against marketing dynamics, and uh, um, you, you have as well kind of the senior manager or the project sponsor that may is willing to invest in this yeah? or carry it through as a product. And uh, um, this, if you get a go ahead, then you normally do the business analysis so here you kind of analyze this against the company objectives and resources. This is literally coming back to uh, the causation argument, uh, if you want. And then you normally develop it, uh, new ideas become small scale reality, uh, maybe via technology or, or an installation or a service that you're providing. Yeah? And then often with the market research, you, you test it as well or pilot it, depending if you uh, um, have uh, technology constraints. The more harmful the impact, yeah, so in, in very advanced uh, product design, we even model it, we, we kind of destroy it a few times to see if we can actually run it. And then you, you have the commercial project uh, um, and you may launch the product, right? And again, uh, um, if you're very commercially scarcity oriented, you, you want to shorten this process. If you're very safety oriented and you, you have like a huge reputation loss, with potential products and you, you try to kind of make sure that that is very safe and uh, a lengthy process that is durable, right? So here you can think of softwares uh, that, that are maybe just uh, trialed and put out and uh, 
ready to break versus uh, flying a plane. You don't want to have a broken plane, right? So then you, know, you have like certain standards that you're going through. And again, this depends on the market that you kind of selling your product, right? So this is important to recognize. Now this is as well a parallel uh, um, theorem for the company that I introduced to you. So here you, uh, um, well, for new product development and entrepreneurial strategy, you often have two main starting points. So one is a brainstorming, the rapid generation of ideas by a group, often from a wide variety of backgrounds without any evaluation of those ideas. So we, we go actually in workshops through this. Yeah, so uh, make sure that, uh, when are we on? Three to six or two to five? Three to six, I think, on Friday. Okay, okay. So make sure you come prepared uh, um, and uh, don't, don't be too tired. Yeah, so uh, early night, uh, three o'clock uh, should be okay. But uh, um, so we, we have a, a um, short brainstorming yeah, where we try out ideas and then we go really through the process. I, I show you a few uh, cool ideas. So I've kind of prepared a few case studies as a base so you can take some of those as well. And then we kind of uh, have a look what, what uh, your ideas are. So we first of all do the brainstorming and then we have uh, the focus groups as a follow-up to kind of evaluate, do an agile evaluation. Uh, um, so I, I hope that will be a lot of fun. So yeah, but brainstorming is as well the most common one actually uh, uh, in, in product design, uh, um, or even R&D uh, is very, very common. Uh, um, then uh, with it, you, you have maybe as well focus groups, so a discussion of around five to eight people selected for their relevance to the subject with uh, evidence being qualitative, uh, not quantitative. Yeah. So again, be, be aware, at this point, uh, um, you're really just looking for kind of value and, and kind of uh, um, ideas as a uh, quantitative source. And then the qualitative stage is really just to position where the idea is set. Yeah. And, and the very sad thing is, this qualitative evaluation is very subjective. Yeah, and uh, sometimes really good ideas actually don't get pursued because people cannot imagine that this could work. Yeah, this is uh, the, the sad truth. Yeah, then a typical process for developing these initial ideas then involves uh, screening, evaluating, I showed you this already in the model, followed by a technical realization process and market testing as ideas are reduced down to the most attractive. We have to look as well at agile manufacturing and agile design it's a different process. Uh, so it, it's as well very common. So if you want to be a start uh, startup, yeah, you, you can go for crowdfunding. Uh, you can set your own product if you have a great idea. There are many products that actually spring up at the moment. Yeah. So we have a lot of new theorems actually around us that make it a lot easier for you today. Yeah. So what, what is innovation then? Innovation is the generation and exploitation of the new ideas. I, I hinted that already earlier. The process moves products and services, human and capital resources, markets and production processes beyond their current boundaries and capabilities. Now, uh, yeah, in my recent paper, I've done uh, a little bit extended uh, um, uh, um, definition. So I looked as well as sustainability. So there's potentially as well consideration without harming uh, the, the future resources of, of uh, um, yeah, uh, of the future generations. Yeah, so this is maybe another dimension that should be in there. Um, now, if, if you come from a kind of uh, entrepreneurial point or business point, you will often see that innovation happens kind of in 10 areas. Now, uh, um, you, you could probably break those down, uh, um, but uh, overall you, you have kind of the areas of finance process offering and delivery. So again, the offering is a little bit broad, but uh, the 10 types of innovation are in business model, how an enterprise makes money. Yeah, so this is as well why you are looking at a business model, not uh, uh, just a business plan. And the networking, you know, value chain and uh, partnering. So uh, we, we have recognized actually more recently, particularly the big companies that kind of uh, um, keep emerging uh, um, are really built through very thorough networks. Yeah? So networks can be even better than having the most competitive idea. Yeah? For scientists, this is just heartbreaking. Yeah, the best idea may not win. It's actually the po most powerful network that may win. Uh, we, we see that in many products. Yeah? You, you may remember the, uh, um, uh, oh, which one was it? Uh, it was a DVD, right? The DVD was actually kind of the weaker product, but uh, um, 
who, who brought the DVD out? Was that uh, um, a South Korean company? No, yeah, well, Japanese Kodak, right? Uh, or something like that? Ah, I have to read up, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they had actually a less competitive uh, product, but they brought it out half a year before the others, so everybody had bought uh, expensive machines with it, and then nobody was interested in the kind of uh, upgraded DVD that had multiple layer reading. Uh, um, scientifically, a few institutes uh, um, embraced it, but in reality, it never caught on. Yeah, so it, it's actually heartbreaking, and the development was very expensive. Uh, so value chain and partnering very powerful, yeah. Networks, then process uh, enabling process. Yeah, how do you actually bring it forward? So this is routine non-differentiating processes often outsourced to others. So uh, um, this can be as well if you get in the right retail network, you you may win anyway again by default. Yeah, or maybe core processes that you uh, use. Yeah, so uh, actually here, uh, um, enabling process, yeah, you would say Uber, this was Uber, right? So they, they have actually changed the format. It's not anymore the taxi lane that you're going to. You, you have your mobile, right? So taxi lane replaced by kind of uh, um, your multifunctional device. Yeah, then again, core processes, yeah, differentiating uh, propriety processes. So this is like kind of setting what is your core ability. Uh, um, then the offering itself. Product performance, particular in engineering, uh, this is where the heart often lies, right? You want an effective and efficient uh, uh, product. You want it to be durable. Well, you know, the, the whole quality agenda comes actually in here, right? So there is as well a certain price if you have your own product. So product performance, you want to be probably on the good side. So this is basic features and functions. Then you have the product system. This is structured uh, offering with an array of a tailable integrated components. So uh, again, how adjustable is it? Uh, we, we see this more and more. We have bespoke products, uh, same product, but slightly adjusted uh, uh, in accordance to your uh, client's needs or requirements. And then you have kind of service that comes with it. So assistant provided uh, to prospects and uh, um, customers. So as well, if something goes wrong, how, how are you looking after that? Last but not least is kind of the delivery. Here we have the channel. So this is a uh, um, conduit through which offerings reach the uh, customers. So who, who do you actually target? Then the brand may be how value is uh, communicated to customers. So uh, um, here we had Virgin, right? Uh, uh, Nick, uh, um, yeah, I mean, Virgin is a classic example. They do a lot of stuff, but the brand is kind of the carrying feature. So whatever they touch appears to become a success, uh, um, yeah. Then uh, you, you have the customer experience, uh, again, very important. All aspects of customer interaction with the company and its brand is kind of part of that. Yeah, and, and here you can potentially as well fall in a trap if you go with one fits all uh, um, provider and you give the product to them. Maybe this creates a different experience to the customer than what you actually want, right? So there are certain uh, um, weaknesses. Now, what's quite interesting is, uh, if you look at how companies actually uh, um, invested, now I have to admit, this is very old, the uh, Joblin uh, analysis, but I haven't found really, uh, well, very reliable uh, recent uh, um, uh, data on this. So uh, uh, Dublin looked kind of at the um, larger companies or, or uprising entrepreneurs, and they looked at uh, um, how companies actually invest in those areas for innovation. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, I've just simplified it into low investment, high investment, and you can see uh, most companies uh, spend actually over proportional in product uh, performance area. Not really surprising, right? This, this is why what we are very good at engineering, right? Making something more durable, overthinking the components, and, and like trying to optimize it for for the particular purpose. As well, adaptability uh, with multifunctional devices like mobiles, it's not really surprising, right? We, we have kind of packed it all in the mobile, so uh, product systems and kind of how it can be adapted into other ones is a very clear area. You see we have a little bit as well on enabling processes and channel and service areas, brand areas. I think at the moment uh, we, we have probably shifted this a lot, so there's a lot going on on networking and customer experience. 
But uh, proportionally speaking, uh, this is basically how, how we are doing at the moment uh, financially and in investing into innovation. So be aware, respectively, where your ideas are. They may have a breakthrough potential, but there's a clear area where uh, companies or, or as well investors uh, um, seem to invest most. Yeah. Now, the study kind of identified as well where the cumulative value creation actually comes from. And that, that was quite terrifying. So actually, the product performance is the lowest one. It's more of access. Uh, so people buy as well a car with pretty crappy paint that, that kind of looks shady after five years if the car is cheaper. Uh, so uh, um, although the paint was a beautiful thing to focus on and make a wonderful paint that lasts forever, uh, um, this doesn't actually pay off if you look at the return of investment. So the value setting comes kind of uh, particular from the financial side, how you set yourself up and the customer experience and the processes you are using. Yeah. This is always heartbreaking for an engineer, yeah, I have to say, it's, uh, at least for me. Yeah. But again, this is uh, um, yeah, what, what we kind of uh, see. Yeah. Oh yeah, th that was worse. So less than 2% of projects produce more than 90% of the value. So and similar so do the innovations that come along with it. Now, as a side uh, concept, I, I had to kind of uh, give you as well the entrepreneurship as an uh, um, definition. So, entrepreneurship is kind of the uh, entrepreneur in the company. So, uh, you too may fall into that, particularly with uh, um, if you go into technology management or engineering management in a big company, you are sitting often on the decision-making level on new ideas, right? So, you you will be very likely to be either championing entrepreneurs or be one yourself. Yeah? So, uh, um, so entrepreneurship is possibly uh, uh, possible in large companies. Um, uh, this is in the literature called entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship focuses on the identification and exploitation of creative and innovative opportunities within larger companies or organizations. Sometimes it's even networks. You know? So this is as well quite common. So a network of companies. Yeah. Uh, um, or there, so consultancies that uh, focus on that. Uh, my my uh, colleague that I uh, visited in Hong Kong, he, he works for uh, um, a design and construction company, Arab, and he works in R&D, and they are literally a network provider to all the Arab uh, network, construction companies, oil and gas, and uh, they do as well design and product design. So they kind of uh, um, host this with consultancies in those organizations and even sell it to other uh, um, uh, companies. Yeah. Here the entrepreneurship needs to be supported by various company policies that encourage entrepreneurial activity and risk taking. So again, uh, you, the, the minimum is that you give resources to your team or employees right, to come up with ideas. If you kind of sequence everything that they're just doing the productive part you don't create space for ideas or for improvement. Yeah? Uh, um, there's as well something about perspective. Actually, it's a thing that I'm working uh, um, on with uh, a colleague in Procter & Gamble. So in Procter & Gamble here, they have sequenced the work so tightly that all the engineers and even the uh, operators and technicians are so narrowly focused that they don't actually recognize kind of very obvious big pro uh, um, process problems because they have refined the area so narrowly and, and they see this only as a responsibility that they uh, um, have a difficulty to kind of see the bigger picture. Uh, so there are a lot of elements like this uh, and it has to do with the framing, how you run your organization. Uh, so there's maybe something inherent that uh, uh, avoids actually entrepreneurial activity to take place. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, risk taking respectively. Now, entrepreneurship, uh, largely in larger companies, may experience structural barriers inherent in the size that can typically inhibit entrepreneurial activity. So greater bureaucracy, more complex, multi-layered decision-making, lack of willingness to share ideas and data, empires built around existing products and services. So uh, um, yeah, that's why management levels can be actually a hindrance. Yeah. Uh, um, then to overcome these and uh, related difficulties, entrepreneurship policies may include the following. Ownership rights, group gain recognition for new opportunity development. So this is actually very powerful. Uh, um, profit centers, performance judged by size of new opportunities. And entrepreneurial team building, so to overcome bias, so cross-functional teams uh, um, 
again, those are quite common actually uh, in, in the industry. So this is normally a good basis to start thinking about ideas and uh, um, efficiencies maybe. Now, uh, um, yeah, a case of entrepreneurship to just introduce it to you because we, in the workshop, we are actually not looking at that. We're looking at your idea. Uh, so you could uh, take a company setting, uh, if you're familiar with one, then feel free to embrace it. Yeah, you, you mentioned that you uh, had uh, your work experience as well in your company. So if you're very familiar with this, feel free to embrace it if you're more interested in the entrepreneurship. But then you're probably based on a certain business model. Yeah? So you have probably set a lot of the criteria that we kind of evaluate uh, to, to create awareness. Yeah, so, so this is just the introduction. So here it's actually CSC. Does anybody know them? CSC? Who are they? No? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe maybe homework. So here is just a, a, a small uh, a fact selection. So it's a global leader in providing technology-enabled business solutions and services. It's a little bit uh, Arab for uh, um, kind of manufacturing and engineering. Uh, um, so Arab is... A, do you know Arab? Arab? No? Okay, maybe we get into specific. So this Arab is a construction and oil and gas kind of company of CSC in engineering and manufacturing. Yeah, but uh, have a look, Google them. They're massive. Yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah they're, they're basically a global leader in providing technology-enabled business solutions and services. So they kind of have a knowledge base and they kind of cater ideas to companies yeah, to enable them. And they even go into industries and aggressively try to promote technologies to kind of make them uh, take it on and then kind of implement it and develop the technologies with the companies. Yeah. So, uh, um, so 93,000 professionals in uh, over 90 countries. Uh, um, 2010 revenue uh, uh, was uh, something like 16.6 .6 billion, so they're doing quite well. They're still doing well. They've actually uh, uh, merged recently and uh, I think now the single largest uh, shouldn't really happen, but uh, uh, the pretty much a monopoly uh, um, at the moment. Uh, the kind of key vision and uh, idea is uh, um, innovation results from the creative application of intellectual capital in a disciplined manner to a problem. Now, what do they actually mean by that? This is kind of their uh, office of innovation. So they have a, a chief of knowledge and innovation, actually. Uh, um, so at the top level, you have kind of the idea generation on one side client and CSC uh, innovation. So this is kind of where they promoted to solution development. Uh, so they work as well with networks. Uh, they have kind of the leading edge forum. They work very closely together with uh, a lot of American universities uh, uh, and UK universities. Um, I think they're as well based in Switzerland or Austria, but I wouldn't put my head to the fire for that. Uh, um, so they are leading edge forum, uh, um, so they are promoting a lot of excellence uh, strategy and innovation. Promote as well uh, management agendas, yeah, so where management should go, and technology agenda. So when we have kind of new root innovations that can be used to kind of advance areas, yeah, uh, um, I, I suppose some, depending uh, um, in industry-wise, do we have any favoritism? Uh, um, Airspace, yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, um, here we had, for example, the standardization of the information uh, uh, model format. So we, we have a standard. Uh, so in the past, you you could have your own kind of 3D digital representation model, and uh, Aerospace had uh, multiple um, softwares that had different outputs, which made it quite difficult actually in the long supply chains of uh, 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 to, to communicate sufficiently with the right. Uh, um, information, so they kind of standardized it. So this was kind of one of their outputs, part of this. Yeah. But uh, that's the only example that I know from them. But the um, uh, otherwise, uh, um, yeah, you, you could, uh, if you go along the information technology route as well, oil and gas. We have at the moment the BIM movement in UK, or uh, um, you could look at uh, uh, smart cities or, or uh, Internet of Things. Uh, this is a very big one uh, um, at the moment. So those are technology agendas that are promoted by governments and uh, economic areas to actually kind of uh, bring about a foundation innovation that you can then implement. So this is a more planned and strategic approach if you want. Now then they have kind of capitalists. Uh, um, this is to say that they have kind of uh, um, 
well, both. So they support kind of SMEs, uh, um, intrapreneurs within their company to kind of trial uh, um, and pilot uh, um, uh, certain projects. And then you, you have kind of the collective intelligence that comes out of the conglomerate. This, this is why well studies at universities to kind of test things. And then the research network that, that uh, um, then create knowledge transfers. So this is maybe an idea that you have. Yeah? You kind of have the prototype. You have figured this out at university. But now it's time to bring it actually in the company. So there are additional factors to implement it. This would be a typical element. Yeah? So knowledge management and enablement. And then they have a global portfolio organizations that they are working with. Yeah, this is their network and their different technologies. So they kind of are, are quite extroverted with this. Now with this, you kind of arrive at a very uh, um, systematic results-driven innovation. So once you kind of work with them, they try to promote other technologies, they try to update kind of the groundwork. This is kind of uh, um, their whole idea. So, and this is probably true for most R&D organizations. Yeah? So ensuring clients have full access to CSCs, innovations worldwide, so they're promoting as well the newest kind of innovations that they have to kind of roll it out to your organizations. Yeah. And they're quite successful with it. Yeah, and uh, they have beautiful analogies. So here they have the pearl, if you know the idea of the pearl, right? You, you actually, it's a horrendous process. So you, you put a, a sand corn into the uh, little uh, creature, and uh, basically uh, the, the it tries to protect itself by putting a lot of pearl mud around it, which becomes a beautiful pearl potentially. Yeah, and uh, pearls go at a good trading price, it turns out. But yeah, again, this is a grain of sand in the oyster, if you want yeah, the the innovation. So if you, the idea, I guess, is if you set the sand corn early, and over time it becomes a pearl. Yeah. So this uh, this is as well kind of the analogy that they are using. So the core and and context of elements of innovation, they have the process. So a process that connects the organization with itself and the outside world. Then there's a kind of uh, um, a discipline that connects that to the enablement. So this is enabling applications, tools, and infrastructure. Then there's the intellectual capital that comes between uh, this and the governance, which is governance organizations and forums to kind of spread the message. They, they use as well other networks. But uh, then the creativity leading basically the governance as well. So here you have leadership that sets the agenda, uh, objectives, and measures uh, um, of success. So this is kind of how they have broken it down. And then it goes on. Uh, um, so a contingency-based system challenges, uh, challenge in search of the levers of change. So again, simplified Bedu, what we do as well. Uh, they focus on customers, shareholders, if it's a shareholder company. So they're looking as well at the return of investment. Interesting, a lot of the companies that have their innovations become shareholders, yeah, which which shows you that they are probably not just like, hey, how much return can I get on my profit? They are probably as well respectively kind of investing in the areas that are kind of their root innovations. Yeah? So it's actually an interesting circle. But this is kind of outsourcing your R&D effectively. Yeah? Industry analyst community, so that's where well very heavily interlinked with universities and, and external sources. Execu uh, executives, so there is where well kind of uh, um, uh, uh, basically hosting executions, so. and alliance partners and employees as well as a strong source. So they, they have kind of broken it down. Now this is uh, um, quite a dry example. Uh, I, I noticed this. Uh, um, so, but this this was from the entrepreneurship and again uh, innovation sitting here around uh, business model and method of. Uh, monetization, product service, value creation, management, value configuration, logistic, and then operating model, which is the structure and the processes that you are employing. Uh, so, yeah. Now, so that, that was the case. Uh, um, this was quite a dry one, and this is just one example. If you kind of have a look at the web page, you will see a lot of the aspects that we are creating for your portfolio. Uh, um, basically hosted by them. Uh, so you can as well, this is a good example because you can kind of Google it and have a look what they're actually advertising. You will see they're promoting exactly what I just said. So kind of the digital revolution, what they call it. They are the digital 4.0, which is the internet of things, uh, smart cities. So this is kind of the topics that they're trying to push at the moment. Yeah. Or, or the uh, um, smart industry. You know, so again, it's uh, um, 
Yeah. Now with this, you, you have as well uh, a competitive advantage and ownership. So here you uh, um, entrepreneur entrepreneurs have, of course, the risk of uh, um, losing out on the idea, particularly if somebody runs off and copies it. Yeah. Uh, um, so identifying and developing sustainable competitive advantage have often to do with reputation and branding, um, as well knowledge acquisition. So this is actually kind of uh, um, commodifying in some form or way the knowledge. So this means you, you may have uh, products or services that you bring out, and then you have a climb of being the first inventor in, uh, of it. Then you have as well the core competences that sit within your company or, or what you're renowned for in your uh, kind of networks. And then other unique resources, uh, such as specialist network of contracts, uh, contacts and advisors may be another source. So you could be based as well in a particular area where you have a lot of specialism setting. So if you harvest so smartly, then there's, uh, again, a source of uniqueness and brand maybe. Yeah. Now, uh, um, the securing legal ownership and the intellectual proper rights, just to name a few, we have patents, trademarks, copyright, maintenance of trade secrets, a secret formula, or other confidential uh, commercial uh, devices. We have as well now more modern formats, particularly with the IT format. Yeah? So softwares have often uh, um, uh, just a recognition clause. So as long as you're referencing them, you're allowed to use the software for non-commercial aspects, so particularly in university, we do that as well a lot. Uh, um, but again, yeah, th those are just a few, but uh, they allow you to kind of uh, um, secure as well your ideas or invention. Yeah. Uh, now, the first two particular patents and trademarks is actually quite uh, um, uh, difficult. So in PepsiCo, we would uh, do this, and we would actually have uh, two employees uh, just in uh, South Africa to write the patents and then legally enforce them in all the main markets where we would act or where our competitors are. So this is actually quite bureaucratic. Yeah? And you have to prove that somebody else is copying your patent, which is actually quite tricky. So it's normally not so, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense for big companies, but it comes with the expense and uh, uh, yeah, will to, the, to fight for that as well. Copyright is uh, um, relatively easy to acquire, but expensive as well to enforce. So uh, um, again, involving complex and expensive legal procedures, it's a little bit the same. Uh, yeah. So p patents are really, yeah, I suppose it's getting a little bit better with the trade agreements that are just up in the air again. But <laughs> so with the trade agreements, you had some format of uh, um, recognizing each other's uh, um, uh, legal formats of trademarks and patents. But at the moment, this is again up in the open, particular because uh, um, countries like America questioning them at the moment, and uh, they were kind of a core uh, uh, player for actually initiating the whole movement. But yeah, again, uh, the the other big one is between China and India has just been actually signed, right? So they they have a trade agreement, and so does China and Russia. So there, there are a lot of uh, um, trade agreements across borders. Yeah, uh, um, that, that actually recognize them. Yeah, so if, if you are trading in those uh, economic areas, they actually recognize your patents and trademarks. So uh, you, you would have uh, um, full compensation rights if, if you find out somebody has stolen your ideas. Yeah. Yeah, implementing the strategic uh, um, opportunity. So here we often look at the technological uh, resources, financial resources, and as well the presentation of entrepreneurial opportunity. I don't, don't worry about it uh, too much. Uh, I, I, we will cover that actually on Thursday. What I want, to, uh, this is as well the traditional business plan, what, what should be in, so environmental evaluation, resource evaluation, uh, purpose to be realistic, and then you have your entrepreneurial business opportunity, often just to kind of explain your target customer, distributions, who you need. And again, there are smart softwares that I show you uh, later where you can evaluate your idea, what what is actually the distribution network that you need. Uh, so this is uh, um, uh, there are actually cool tools online for that. Pricing as well. Uh, um, this comes, of course, how much you pay. Huh? So if you if you pay yourself as an entrepreneur the annual salary of half a million, then your product has this as well in it. Yeah? So it's a more expensive product. Yeah? But you, you would be surprised if you do the pricing from scratch where some products get the price from. Yeah? You know, this is actually quite surprising if you do it from scratch. Yeah, uh, quality and services as, as well part of it. 
reputation and marketing maybe and alliances or joint ventures is maybe as well part of it. Now this is a, a traditional one when we come to the business models you will see uh, we, we have a lot of new forms that, that are actually quite common nowadays. Okay, but let's have a look now at my Weiss and Freitag example. Uh, wait a minute. So what I want you to do is, uh, um, this is a question that I want you to consider. Will Freitag be able to develop in a large corporation if they continue to base their business development on effectual reasoning and, and why and or why not? Yeah, so just keep that in mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I show you a case study of entrepreneurs that kind of started off and we have kind of the interview before they even have a company and then they get interviewed again in their first year and it doesn't look so good actually. Yeah, but uh, um, so the, this is a question that I want you to consider. Uh, um, do you think that they have a chance and can grow into a large company like the other one or uh, is that rather hard for them? Okay, so here we go with a little bit of luck. This should work. Actually, let's pause that because otherwise this will interfere. 